My name is Sylvester McCoy, and you're watching Dr. Freedom. Folks, Dr. Freedom here with Times from Dr. News. News from in and around the universe that may or may not affect you on a deeply emotional, joyous level that could be called Chris Morgasmic. Because does that even work with Christmas? But, um, yeah, ran across some stuff earlier in the, this week. Um, Comes the Imperator Chapter 3, of course, is out for you folks who've been tuning in for that i'm going to try to have chapter four out by the new year but like i said that depends on if i can get it the script written passed out get our lines back and then you know get everything put together and smacked out by the new year um because i'm going to have some time off coming up and i'm probably going to use it just for that get that done and over with um but I'm glad there's a lot of folks out there enjoying it. Um, you know, like I said, some folks gave some criticism, but like I said, I've been learning by the criticism on that show. And also keep in mind, if there's people, if someone said something about the acting, the only person I ever paid to be in any of those audio plays was Sophie Alder. No one else, all these folks are volunteering their time to do this. So, you know, sure, I'll accept your criticism on it, but I'm not going to go smack them across the head and say, read this better or anything like that, because I'm not paying them. They're not my employees. You know, they're doing this, you know, out of generosity. So, okay, but let's get off that. Let's get to this. Oh, by the way, yeah, there are going to be spoilers. But this is what I'm going to do. After, all the way at the end of this program, I'm going to give a spoiler warning, and then I'm going to go into what I do have. Okay, so we're going to do the news articles, then I'll say spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, and then boom, we'll go right into it. Okay, that was only a drill. Don't, don't go running for the bunker yet. Okay? Charlie's not in the wire. Okay, but um, so once again, I'm going to do the regular news, then, we'll, then I'll do a spoiler alert, then we'll talk about what I've heard. Um, so... Let's get into it. Let's get on to it. Let's get into the good stuff, baby. Dr. Freedom, he's showing you cool stuff. Yeah, baby. Oh, I played it into the 70s. Speaking of the 70s look, uh, <laughs> yep, that is the proper color for Jody's coat. This was put out the other day. And uh, also, we got to keep in mind, as of the day before yesterday, December 15th, the, sh the filming is now on hiatus for the holidays. So they will not resume filming from this point on until January 2nd. And word is that will be in South Africa. We'll have to hang around and see if that is true. But if it is, word is that they're going to have a crew down there for a month. So rather interesting development there if that pans out. All right. So let's get on. Let's move. All right. So nice shot of Jody. Okay, moving on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wrong screen. Duh. All right. Here we go. Um, this was posted up just a little while ago, looking for a digital marketing manager to join my global fry franchises team at BBC worldwide. And this is for Dr. Who. So blah, 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 blah. So right here, I'm, you know, if I'll leave a link to this, if you want to go check it out, you never know if you're out in that area, maybe you could score a job on the show. Get, get a haircut and get a real job. Okay, twice upon a time, new clip. Yes, that also came out today, or it's been put up today here. Um, very, like I said, not really spoilery. Well, it kind of is in a way, but it, yeah, because especially if you don't want to be exposed to any more of it, but it's a one minute clip from the show. And yeah, I think you'll enjoy it, man. Okay, Amanda Abington says, I want to play Jody Whitaker's arch enemy and talk to him. The Sherlock and Cricket House star says that playing the nemesis of the first female doctor would be her dream role. Okay. So she's been after a role in Doctor Who for a while now. You know, blah, blah, blah. You would think that was Stephen Moffat as my mate, but yes, I'd love to be in Doctor Who. She told the Independent two years ago, and I fast forward to the end of 2017. Moffat's handing over the reins, of course, blah, blah, blah. And 
she goes, I'm going to ask my agent, I want to be the doctor's nemesis. I can be her arch enemy. I've never done Doctor Who and I've always wanted to. My kids say to me, how come you've never done Doctor Who? And I say, I won't know. On my list of next things to do is to be in Doctor Who. I asked Patrick Stewart that same question a few years ago when, I, when he did come to Ohio. I was like, why haven't you been in Doctor Who? And he goes, because they haven't asked me. So that's right there, the answer. They have Ian McKellen. Why the hell Patrick Stewart ain't been in? Screw you, Amanda. I want Patrick Stewart. Okay, mom. Sorry, I'm just kidding. <sighs> okay, so in the evening standard, Mark Gatiss reveals Peter Capaldi's Doctor Who send-off was emotional as he presents Jodie Whittaker's appointment. Okay, so, okay, reveal, of course, we knew this. There were tears on the set of Doctor Christmas special as the show said goodbye to the current Doctor Peter Capaldi. Because earlier this year, Stephen said to me, will you keep your summer free because I've written a part for you in Peter's last story and I want you to be there when I go. So the 51-year-old actor confessed, we were all in tears. It was the screening the other night, and we were all in tears. I'm afraid it's happy and sad. So, all right, so, so what he said about Jodie Whittaker, it's fantastic. What I love about this, I love the costume. I love, I call it the God's Bell chic. I got a lo it's got a lovely early 70s feel to it, which I really like. I think it's a fantastic choice, Jodie. It's a whole new era, and I don't know anything about it, which is a position I've not been in since 2004. So, we were deliber we deliberately left it in a sort of happy place where we could go back. We have no plans at the moment. Steve and I are going to do Dracula, and that is a reference to Shitlock. And the problem is with me when they did that whole episode that was taking place in Sherlock's Mind Palace. Ooh, why don't you just go have what's his name, the guy who plays Moriarty, step out of the shower? I, I just didn't watch it after that. Uh, I was like, no, I, I don't do dream episodes anymore. It, it just Okay, this is over on Blunt, and this is about 25 minutes long. And this is Mark Gatiss talks about League of Gentlemen and the Dr. Christmas specials. So boom, 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 here it is. If you want to go watch it. All right, okay, as Peter Capaldi really left Dr. behind, he's texting me pictures of TARDISes he finds in the street, says Stephen Moffat. So I think it's hugely emotional watching him do that final speech in the TARDIS, he said. It's extraordinary. He's a great man. He's a great friend. I'm saying goodbye to the whole show, but I'm also saying goodbye to working with Peter all the time, which is incredibly sad. But I'm delighted to report he's in Glasgow and he's texting me pictures of Tardises he finds in the street. Does you think he's left it all behind entirely? He found a red one. He wasn't pleased at all. <laughs> so, you know, it's going to be hard for Peter to let go. You know, he is getting towards those twilight years. So one may want to slip him some mink at Ginkgo Biloba. Okay, all right. All right. Okay, and for you folks who are not using an ad blocker, look at this. <laughs> I love this cute little shit they pull. If you want to use your ad blocker, you should pay us money. Go to hell. The Herald, are you shitting me? You think I'm going to pay you money for the Herald? Okay, but from Doctor Who to Marvel's Avengers and Jumanji, the rise and rise of Karen Gillan. And this is a nice little article going over stuff that's happened to her since Doctor Who and whatnot. And... It's a nice little article. Well, it's kind of, well, it's a good read. It'll give you about five minutes of something to do. But I thought it was very interesting because it's out Karen Gill and all the things she's done since. And she, she really has done an amazing thing since she left Doctor Who. Now, Doctor Who, all the full episode scripts available to download. Okay, courtesy of the BBC Writers Room website, more and more scripts from Doctor Who are being made available for download. All right, the latest to be added is the store here. Oh, sorry. sorry. I had a moment. All right. So the latest to be edited is the Series 10 story, Thin Ice by Sarah Dollard. And you can download it directly in PDF format from here. And boom, 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 check out all these happy little links. So if you want to go read how this starts, like I said, it, scripts are funny. Like I said, I've been writing them myself. I try to keep them pretty simple, you know, for the guys. You know, but uh, So scripts are fun to read because it kind of shows you how it started on the page, you know. So, okay, there is a Doctor Who tour that takes in famous London's locations where the Doctor has bat battled trans-dimensional foes. And if you're interested in this, there's a London walk just for Doctor Who obsessives. Get your tickets here. The Doctor Who tour of London takes place on Sundays, also on Thursday, December 28th. So if you're into all this, boom, 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 about, you know, maybe doing a set location walk, I know they have them down in um Cardiff, if you look around, I think they still do the set location walks. But you got to dig around for that. I, I'll have to check and see if that's still going on. So, boom. Okay, now it's time. Okay, leave the room. Spoiler alert. 
leave the room. Spoiler alert. Or as River Song says, spoiler. Okay, this is what I've heard. All right, so. Okay, now apparently what's going on is with the Christmas special. All right. And the reason I wanted to say anything about it is because it turns out I did get one bit wrong. I was firmly on the side that Matt Smith was not going to appear. Now, words reached me apparently that Dr. Eleven and Nardo, Nardo, or not it, Nardo, Nardo, what was that? Nardo is going to appear along with Clara. Now, like I said, I gave the spoiler alert. You should have been out the room or behind the couch or sticking your finger. Like, Okay, so word is this uh, shape this this crystal creature is a shapeshifter, and hence that's why Bill is in it. That's why she ain't Water Girl. It's not really actually in a way Bill. At least that's what I'm hearing. And then she takes the form of Clara for the big goodbye. So keep your mind, keep that in mind as you watch it. Like I said, if you're watching at this point, you were warned. Okay. Okay, and what they're doing is, as, as we predicted, they're going to fade in from the 10th planet. And they're going to fade out just in time as they go to the Partnel Trout and Regeneration. And that's kind of what we've been hearing for a little while now. So that's kind of confirmed now. Um, basically, the previously segment that they're going to do at the beginning is a recap of 10th planet. And it'll have a whopping 15 to 20 seconds of recon, retcon. That's it. And also, it is involving the Christmas truce. And from what I've heard, Okay, Nardo and Levin also make a cameo, and same person says that the captain is the brigadier's dad. So it turns out, after all the weird speculation about this guy, like I said, that's another thing I didn't think they'd do. But from what I'm hearing, that's true, that the captain is the brigadier's dad. If you watch these last couple of minutes, like I said, it's on your own head. I, I did warn you that this, and also that's why I deliberately put this at the end. Well, folks, I'm going to get running. Take care, Tata. -ta. Enjoy the rest of your day. If I hear any more about it, like I said, I'm going to give you plenty of warning. So that way you can't come bashing on my door. And go, you red Christmas room, you fat bastard. Sorry. <laughs> I got lawyers. Matter of fact, he's that funny guy with the helmet. Go talk to him. Good night. <laughs>